What's up YouTube? It's Todd Horst here with Tasty Tracker. I already recorded this video once, but I had TurboTax running and my laptop can't handle both things at once, I guess. So uh, anyway, hopefully this recording turns out. So this is the second video in the 2K to 10K challenge. Uh, today I made around 117, which puts my count up to 2316. It's not really fair because I already had positions on um, that I knew were going to expire today and they were out of the money, so I was going to keep the full 100% of the premium that I sold them for. Um, so it's not entirely fair. I knew it was going to take a bit of a jump up here, um, but it is still money I made today, 117 um, in, in the bank and uh, already close to 2,500. So um, I'll go over a trade I did today and talk a little bit more. So uh, I do have a couple talking points. I'll try to keep these videos as short as I can. Um, and you can definitely play this uh, videos at like 1.5 or 2x because uh, I know I speak a little bit slower and um, you know I always watch everything really fast too. So um, hopefully that helps. I'm only really planning on doing updates when there's a significant change up or down to my account size uh, or when I open or close or roll or adjust a position. Uh, I'm definitely not planning on doing it every day. That would be exhausting at this point in my life. I've got uh, two young kids and, um, and a full-time job. So uh, yeah, I don't have time to do daily videos uh, at this point. Um, and so I don't intend on doing that. The other thing there is the positions don't move that much with uh, this style of trading. So I can put a position on and it will literally stay at that exact same point for a day or two before it starts to move um, in, in my favor. So you'll see that when I go over the plays in a second here. Uh, so the next bullet point here is how do I find my tickers? I do have a watch list uh, on the seventh video I made, number seven, um, but just for sake of simplicity, I copied and pasted it here. They're in no particular order. You find that all of these stocks are the same stocks that everybody's trading day in and day out. Um, and, and trading options on as well. So if you're in any discords or on Reddit, you're gonna see these names pop up over and over and over again. I do have uh, question marks in this bottom box here because um, there'll be earnings or some news on uh, something that will cause other stocks to be, um, or securities to be looked at. But for the most part, basically there's something happening on any given day on one of these stocks. So you can, um, use this as your base watch list to see if you're uh, to see which ones are up or down on the day or um, to sort of mold them into whatever strategy you end up doing. Uh, a very similar point there is what am I watching? And to be honest, I'm not really watching anything specifically uh, at any given point. I will have all of those that I just showed you on a watch list. And then the other thing I do is I go to the uh, leads and then the scanner um, page that this is 99% uh, done. It's still not finished, but um, I typically stay on the 52 week gainer uh, view. And then I'm looking for either the weighted out al uh, alpha or a high percentage uh, year change or the high hits. So if I sort by the one year change, um, you can see a bunch of these are insane um, year growth compared to SPY. SPY was 30% in the past year ish, and and these are um, you know triple, quadruple. Um, those size. Now a lot of these are pharmaceutical companies which I'm actually not a fan of because there's uh, you know they'll be flat 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 and then they'll all of a sudden have a pop um, and so I don't really like trading those so uh, yeah so I can sort by one of these two columns but my favorite column actually at the moment anyway um, and my style like everybody else's is constantly evolving but um, yeah so I'm Sorting by high hits, which is the number of times this uh, security hit a new high. And so if it's um, even at the very bottom of this list, it's 48. Um, so they're hitting new highs uh, almost once a week. So ETR, I had actually shown uh, you yesterday that I, excuse me, had a position in ETR already open. 
Um, and then today I opened up a position in M MAA in my larger account. Um, so I'm going to sort by highest hits and then I'm going to look at the chart. Um, so if I open that up, give it a second here. Um, this is using the same charting uh, view, trading view that everybody uses. Um, so, uh, so you should be pretty familiar with how it works, but uh, anyway, I have the MACD and RSI on here by default. So anyway, uh, ETRs had a bit of a um, a constant move, uh, a steady move up here, uh, although it was pretty range bound over here. Um, so yeah, I thought this was um, worth taking a risk on in my larger account. Uh, brown and brown, I don't really like it being so low. Typically, I don't trade anything. Um, unless it's above 30 and uh, you know 50 is still on the edge of what I like to trade um, so the next one would be MAA and if you can see this has a pretty nice chart where um, the whole year it's been let me scrunch this down a little bit okay the whole year it's been sort of on a steady incline and it's definitely on an incline at the moment so uh, I just have a small position there again on my larger account. So that's typically how I look for different stocks. I'll go through and I'll hit stars on the ones that I think look in interesting. Um, I'm pretty much constantly in Apple and Microsoft to some extent. Um, but anyway, I think that covers that bullet point. Uh, I was asked about managing losers and I do roll or close. Um, and then obviously they're all risk-defined strategies. So uh, there's a couple strategies in place there to, first of all, increase my uh, odds of success, but then um, also capping my losses. And if I can roll out for a credit, I'll do that. Um, I don't typically, if it looks like it's going to be a loser, I don't typically hold on to hope. I just close out the position. Uh, nine times out of 10, that's the right thing to do and you get your 50 bucks back even though that's not much, it's something. Um, yeah, there is one or two times um, out of 10 where it will come around, but um, even that, that's pretty high. It's, it's probably like 9.5 times it's the right thing to do. Anyway, um, the important part there is that you're not adjusting too soon, uh, so don't roll it out too soon, and uh, don't freak out if it's below. Um, so everything is a case-by-case -case basis, obviously. Um, I'll just look at the uh, supports and see where they are and hey does it make sense to hold on if it's only got to come up a, a buck or two then I'll hold on to it um, if it's way out of out of whack uh, like today I closed a OLED OLED position that I had um, it had taken a drop a couple weeks back um, and then with earnings it, it totally crashed so it still had another month or two but I closed out of the position because the strikes that I had, it wasn't going to come back to in time. So I got out and uh, closed it only for a 50% loss instead of losing the entire um, amount. Uh, last bullet point really here is uh, down days and reserves. So past two days have been down days on the market. Um, typically, the market doesn't have, you know, down day after down day after down day um, or up day after up day after up day. So, it, it goes back and forth. So uh, for the down days, obviously, um, I want to put positions on with the hope that I can close them out on an up day. Um, and so it's important to have some reserves in. I used to think when I first got started that if I didn't have the money in the market, I just had it sitting there, that it wasn't earning me money. But the reality is you need that reserve. So on those down days, you can open up another position and uh, capitalize on that move. Um, uh, I think um, I, I definitely could do that more on my larger account, however, because it's um, it has enough of a buffer room that if I don't hit it exactly right, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I'll usually just add to a position if it um, goes against me a little bit. Um, but anyway, that's, I think, about it. Uh, next, I wanted to show... Um, Tastyworks and Tasty Tracker. So, uh, if anybody knows how to fix this chart up here, uh, I'll, 
it'll usually work for a couple weeks and then I'll have a couple days where it doesn't work. It's only when the entire portfolio is selected. Uh, if I select an individual position, then it'll work. So yeah, let me know if you know about that in the comments. But anyway, um, okay, so here's the positions I have uh, right now with the uh, market being down the past two days. Apple is sort of sitting right at a break even. Um, AMD is the new position I put on today and you can see there's a bit of a buffer here built into my positions. So all I do here is I click on the trade tab, go to uh, AMD. Uh, and then I'm going out to a monthly expiration. I don't really like to do weekly expirations. Getting into weeklies is pretty easy, but getting out I've had trouble with in the past, so I um, stay away from them for now. Um, occasionally I test it out again to see how, uh, if I have the same experiences, but anyway. And uh, so the next month here is in March. That's only 20 days, 27 days, and um, that's a little bit too close for what I like to play. So I like uh, around 45 days, so April is the the next monthly and that's at 40 uh, 55 days to expiration so the next thing I click here is the short put um, so I am this is a bullish play I want AMD to go up so I'm selling the put I'm selling the 50 strike and buying the 49 that's only a dollar wide so I'm having $65 of risk for $35 of premium uh, so because the two uh, positions that expired today don't come off till tonight or tomorrow, uh, EIDX and SEDG back here, I didn't have enough capital, so I only bought uh, three of these instead of five, which I would typically allocate uh, 500. Um, so anyway, so I, you can increase the quantity to three, so now it says three over here. Uh, it's at 36 net credit. Um, you're going to want to hit the lock button so that it stays at 36 uh, so that your uh, limit fill instead of a, a market fill if you do if you don't have the lock it'll fill at whatever price it can um, and and then you don't know what you're getting into so anyway make sure the lock is clicked um, so then I go to submit and I can see I get hundred and eight dollars total uh, premium received and it cost me a, a 198 collateral um, and so the uh, that includes um, any fees uh, and commissions so 192 is the actual uh, difference there between 108 but then they the buy buying power reduction is the full amount so anyway you would hit send order there uh, and have that working uh, I guess that's all I wanted to cover about AMD why did I put AMD on today? Because that's on the normal watch list. And then with the two market down days here, I'm viewing the uh, yearly chart, uh, one year, one day. Okay. Um, and it's had two down days. And I actually had this line drawn back here um, at these candles. And so it's just funny that today uh, completely rested on my candle, uh, on my uh, support line that I had already drawn. Uh, a couple a couple weeks ago um, okay so this is the first support that I have identified and then here's the second support that I have identified you could sort of count this in here but that's too small of a range that I don't count that um, but anyway uh, so the gold bar is the break-even for the price uh, I guess I didn't show that here uh, so if I go in here it will say the break-even price is 49 64. Uh, my site will also tell you that, um, and it's usually uh, Tastyworks and I vary a cent or two, but the um, the premise is pretty close. Okay, so the gold line is, uh, it has to be above that gold line, and I will win the position. And I have the whole way out to April, which is out here, um, to make sure that it's above this gold line. Um, so I've identified this first support. If it does break that support, it should stop at the second support. And if it's trading in this range, I can close it out on one of the updates if it really looked like it wasn't coming up. AMD is also, uh, I'm bullish in general on AMD, so um, I would be comfortable rolling that position out. 
Okay, so that's what I was sort of looking at uh, when I put the position on. I pretty much ignored the MACD and the RSI, which if you go off a traditional charting, uh, that would tell you that this is about to enter uh, bearish, and it very well could, um, but it could continue up. So I'm going to take my risk here and uh, give myself enough time. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show back here, which I forgot to show, is because this is a 41% pro, uh, in the money, that means it's about 60% chance it will be profitable. However, if you hit this little uh, arrow down here, it'll say prop or P50, which is taking the percentage at uh, profit at 50%. Um, yeah, so that's at 74%. So you can gain 15 percentage points right off the bat by taking your profit at 50%. Um, so I talked about uh, in another video that um, taking it early allows you to keep uh, having new positions on and and having them on for say 15, excuse me, 15 days at a time. So in a normal 45 day expiration, I can typically get three positions uh, opened and closed. And so if I, um, that would be 150% premium. Uh, so compared to the 100% premium that I would collect if I just kept this one position on. I hope that makes sense. Um, so if I kept one, say I got $100 if I kept it the whole way through expiration. If I take three positions instead and close them all at 50, all for the same amount, that would be 50 plus 50 plus 50, 150 bucks. So I just made $50 more by closing it early. So it is a little bit counterintuitive. Okay, so if I click on the EIDX, these are that's the one that expired today. Uh, ETR I put on yesterday. Um, and with the market down, I did lose some money today, uh, 30 bucks. But um, definitely not worried about it. If uh, at the time of expiration, you'll see this um, green top line sort of smushed down and so because it lines up right with my I'm actually at I would be at max profit if it expired today even though it's showing a loss so this is a situation where um, you might even want to double down or you might want to um, open some at a strike or two lower but I'm definitely not too concerned I could have collected more premium had I waited, um, but but ultimately uh, the position is still 100% fine. So MA's MasterCard, that is right on the edge as well, and SEDG, like I said, that's another expiration. Uh, okay, so in Tasty Tracker, real quick, the uh, I guess the last thing I'll show you is um, how I add that in. Uh, so I click Add, type AMD. Or, or SM, <laughs> SAMD. Uh, and then he, in the type box, I could hit the drop down, but I know it's uh, put vertical, so I just hit P twice. And then I hit tab to get into the uh, op uh, open date, and I just hit enter, and it dropped me right down to the strike. So I can hit 49, 49 if I can type, and then I can hit enter again and hit 50. Uh, for the quantity, I could do that and hit three. And then this was in April, which uh, week, uh, monthly expirations are always on the third week. So I know right away it's on April 17th. And then I would do 0.35 and it automatically figures out the collateral um, and the commissions. So if I hit save, then I can see it popped up here. Um, and then I can see the break even right there. So anyway, uh, that's a little bit of tutorial on how tasty tracker how quick it is it you know it takes me three seconds to fill that out um, and when I do get the uh, trade alerts set up that's how I'll be doing it I'll be entering it in here and then I'll click a button and it will um, publish or it'll most likely it'll publish automatically but anyway that's all I have for today uh, hopefully that helped you out if you have any questions let me know definitely give it a subscribe and a thumbs up if you could and I'll see you next time